Welcome everyone to this afternoon's uh, worship service, ordination and installation service of our new pastor, Caleb Shawi. We ask that you join us this morning. I'm sorry, this afternoon. <laughs> Old habits. In singing, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying, hymn 573 in the Christian worship hymnal. rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. For I have not read, studied, and heard your holy word as often as I should have. I have not always taken your words to heart. 
and applied it to my personal life as faithfully as I should. But trust me. According to your unfailing love, cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and the innocent death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. pray. Almighty God, look with favor on those you have called to minister to your people. Fill them with doctrine and clothe them with holiness of life, that they may joyfully serve to the glory of your name and for the benefit of your church through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. be seated. Our first scripture reading this afternoon, it is afternoon, is about the call of Isaiah to be a prophet. Many of the prophets who were called by God did not want the job. They told God they couldn't do it. Isaiah, on the other hand, volunteered. It's wonderful to have people who anxiously look forward to speaking for God, to proclaiming his word to his people, and to bringing salvation to them. We read from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings, with two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of our God. Did you notice the thought that came to Isaiah's mind when he saw God? I'm a man of unclean lips. Now, How many people would think of that when they think of how sinful they are? Hardly any. And yet the call that he was going to receive was to be the messenger of God himself. So that was a very, very pertinent thought that God brought to his mind. He was not worthy of the calling he was about to receive. And the people he served were not worthy 
of him as a messenger of God either. Just a moment. Our psalm for this afternoon, the Psalm 84 on page 96 in front of the Christian worship hymnal. Our second scripture reading this afternoon is the instruction by St. Paul to a young pastor, Timothy, whom he had trained and who was taking over in some of the churches that Paul had established in his mission work. Paul instructs Timothy to be faithful in his calling, to proclaim God's word of salvation to his other people, and he tells them how to live also as a Christian. We read from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 4 through 16. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales, rather, Train yourself to be godly, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, and for this we labor and strive that we have put our hope in the living God who is the Savior of all men and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters, Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch over your life and doctrine closely. 
persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Here ends our epistle reading this afternoon. We hear the verse of the day as we prepare for the gospel reading. Alleluia. Let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. Alleluia. Our gospel reading on this ordination and installation service is Jesus' words pointing out to us how desperate is the need for shepherds for God's people and asking us to pray for shepherds who would bring God's word to them. The word shepherd is the word pastor. Jesus went, excuse me, we should rise for the gospel reading. Thank you. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him, and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Here ends our gospel reading. Let us join now in singing our hymn of the day, Preach You the Word, hymn 544 in the Christian Worship Hymnal.
Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that we consider on this special occasion is recorded by the Apostle Paul in his second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is going to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready, whether it is convenient or not, correct, rebuke, and encourage with all patience and teaching. For there will come a time when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, because they have itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in line with their own desires. They will also turn their ears away from the truth and will turn aside to myths. As for you, keep a clear head in every situation. Bear hardships. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Dear members and guests of Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church, my fellow brothers in the ministry, my family, especially you, pastor-elect Caleb Shawey. During your baseball days, in Little League and at MLS, there may have been times when you heard me yelling from the sides, things like, Keep your head in there. Don't step into the bucket. Watch the ball get into your glove. Throw it hard. Guess what? I did not come up with those baseball gems on my own. Rather, I was just repeating things I heard from other coaches and experts throughout the years. And yet, it is good to repeat sound advice because we human beings tend to forget or ignore. Today, though, you are not playing baseball. Today, you are being ordained into the public ministry and installed as the pastor here at Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church. And I am giving you different advice today. Again, it is not something that I've come up with on my own. Thank God for that. Nor is it anything new. Because you know, and we all here know, that you have been trained to do this and called to do this. And yet it is good for all of us here to have this repeated so that we do not forget or ignore it. What the Apostle Paul was inspired to declare to the younger Pastor Timothy, I declare to you, preach the word. Preach the word because as pastor that is the charge given to you. Let's look at this solemn charge that Paul gave to Timothy. Here, he pictures himself as a witness in a courtroom, swearing to tell the truth. He calls on two most authoritative and impartial witnesses, God the Father and Christ Jesus, to verify that he is telling Timothy the truth. And Paul bases this on the fact that this is just as true as Christ's second appearing and his eternal rule. What Paul is emphasizing to Timothy here is this. Preaching the word is to be your 
top priority. That's how solemn and serious this charge is. This charge is also very specific. Be ready, whether it is convenient or not. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with all patience and teaching. There will be times when people will expect you to preach the word. Like when they come here for services and Bible classes. There will be times when people will not be expecting you to preach the word. Like when they run into you in the store. Be ready always. Preach the word. There will be times when people need to hear God's law to recognize their sin and guilt. There will be times when people need to hear God's gospel assuring them of the forgiveness of sins and the gift of life from God based on the perfect life, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection of the world Savior, God's Son, Jesus Christ. Be ready always to proclaim God's law and gospel. And don't think that you can say it once and it sticks. For the sinful nature of all of us stubbornly keeps wanting to pop up when it's hammered down by God's law and it needs hammering again and again. But the tender conscience of us all seems to not be able to shake that guilt of our sins and needs that cross of Christ before us again and again. Be ready always with patient, repeated teaching to proclaim God's law and gospel because preaching the word is your top priority. Well, so far I haven't said anything Shockingly new, right? But I do want to highlight two thoughts from Paul's solemn charge to preach the word. The first thought is this. Preach the word with confidence. The confidence that God's word works. When Paul told Timothy, preach the word, he did not add, and it's up to your skill and abilities to change people's hearts. No. By God's word, the Holy Spirit leads people to see their sin and guilt and leads them to repent. By God's word, the Holy Spirit works faith in the hearts of people to believe in Jesus the Savior. To preach the word, you need to trust that the word works. The second thought is this. Preach the word to yourself. I know you. I know that you are get harder on yourself than anyone else can be when you do something wrong or make a mistake. And you will do some wrong things and make mistakes as a pastor. How do I know that? There is no pastor here today or out there who has been a perfect pastor, including myself. But don't spend your time beating yourself up over these mistakes you make when you also should be hearing what you are preaching. That God's Son, Jesus Christ, 
live that perfect life for you. That Jesus Christ suffered the punishment for all of your sins on that cross. That Jesus Christ rose from the dead as the guaranteed of your restored eternal relationship with God. And that because of Jesus Christ, the all-glorious Lord has entrusted to you the ministry of His Word. Yes, preach the Word to yourself so that you can always carry out this solemn charge of proclaiming God's grace and favor to others. But just so you know, this won't be easy. The reality is that there is a challenge to preaching the Word. Paul warns Timothy, for there will come a time when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, because they have itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in line with their own desires. They will also turn their ears away from the truth and will turn aside to myths. It sounds all too familiar, doesn't it? Maybe you have noticed how true this description is of our time, of the people in this area, of the people in our state of Michigan, of the people in our nation, indeed of the people in this world. Looking at Paul's words, that people will not put up with sound doctrine, the word sound also means healthy. Now think of people whose doctor tells them that they need to get on a healthy diet. And yet they say, I don't want that. I want to eat sugar cereals and Doritos and a constant supply of Snickers. And they stuff their mouths and fill their bellies with this junk food that is detrimental to their physical health. Except Paul here isn't talking about what people want in their mouths and stomachs, right? He's talking about what people want in their ears. People don't want to hear the sound teaching of God's law that they are sinful, that they have done wrong. Rather, they would rather hear how good they are, how they are better than others, how they are entitled to things from others. People don't want to hear the sound teaching of God's gospel. They don't want to hear that they need help, that they need a Savior. What they want to hear is how they can help themselves, the good works that they can do to earn eternal life for themselves. Of course, there are certain crafty people out there who knowing that this will make them popular and prosperous, will make up all sorts of feel-good teachings and offer this spiritual junk food to satisfy people's itching ears. People will gobble that up. Caleb, I know that I've mentioned this to you before. Your grandpa, my dad, would mention to me from time to time, I worry about you younger pastors because things will become more and more difficult. You know what? I feel the same way. It's not hard to see that attitude of not putting up with God's word and what it teaches. 
how that is increasing more and more. The farther away we get from Christ's first coming and the closer we get to Christ's second coming. And yes, that attitude can become so frustrating for a pastor. And yet, that's why preaching the word needs to be top priority. Your people here need to be ready and alert to Christ's second coming when he will judge the living and the dead. Other people need to become aware that Christ is coming to judge all. In fact, all people need to hear the solid, sound teaching that the God-man, Jesus Christ, came the first time to serve as the perfection and punishment for all. That by faith alone, in Jesus as the only Savior, will people hear that judge with his declaration not guilty of sin and his invitation of eternal life in heaven for them. Whether people care to listen to it or not, preach it. Because that word, and only that word of God, is what's good for people's spiritual health. Preach the word in spite of the challenge. And that's why preaching the word takes character. In contrast to those feel-good teachers, Paul tells Timothy, as for you, keep a clear head in every situation. Bear hardships. With these two admonitions, Paul is encouraging Timothy to have the proper attitude of a pastor. The first one basically means be sober. But Paul is not here so much thinking about the malady of getting drunk on alcohol. Rather, the warning is to not let the success of those feel-good teachers out there or the gung-ho attitude people have for that intoxicate a pastor into the bad judgment of following what they are doing. Nor is a pastor to let the difficult situations he faces, the struggles he has, lull him into inactivity. Have the proper attitude. Be clear-headed. Be strong-headed. And preach the word. The next two statements focus on the proper actions of a pastor. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. By the way, Shepherd of the Lake members, when Paul here says do the work of an evangelist, he's not urging you to push your pastor into being on TV regularly so you can just sit at home and watch. Now what Paul is talking about is how he is to be preaching the gospel. That good news of the Savior Jesus Christ is to dominate, predominate everything that you do as a pastor. Plus, every pastor here will tell you that there are certain activities in the ministry that we are good at and enjoy doing. And there are certain activities in the ministry that, well, we struggle with. The temptation is to focus on the things you like to do or enjoy doing or think you're good at, right? One may be, feel comfortable in the study, preparing for sermons and Bible classes, and yet just feels uncomfortable making those evangelism calls. 
another one may feel really good about getting in touch with people and enjoys that and yet dreads church administration and paperwork. Fulfill your ministry, Paul says. Paul encourages Timothy and you to make sure that you carry out all the duties and responsibilities of your service to God's people, which includes making that extra effort to work at those things you may not necessarily be good at or enjoy, because those things too are part of preaching the word. Caleb, at times I see a lot of me in you. Just as I have at times seen a lot of Grandpa Shavey in me. One negative of that is the thinking that we have to do everything on our own. No. You have good people here. I know from God's word that they have received from God gifts and abilities to serve their Lord for the common good of his church. A good leader delegates and encourages those who can. And he trains those who potentially can. There is a balance in the ministry. Knowing what you are responsible to do and knowing what God's people are responsible to do to support you in that task of preaching the word. Indeed, preaching the word takes the character of one who has the right attitude and carries out the right action. So why are we doing this today? As a new pastor begins his public ministry for and among his new people, it is good to reflect on how solemn, serious, and specific the task is to preach the word. It is good for new pastor and people to realize how difficult the task is to preach the word in these times. It is good for the new pastor and people to recognize the faithful and dedicated character it takes to preach the word. Pastor-elect Caleb Shawi, your people need to hear your solemn promise that you are committed to this task for as long as the Lord gives you to serve them. Members of Shepherd of the Lakes, your new pastor needs to hear your solemn promise to support him in this task of preaching the word with your prayers and your gifts, with your love, and respect. And that's why we are doing this today. And that's why I've borrowed 2,000 year old advice from the Apostle Paul to give to you today. Preach the word. What a neat summary that is for pastor to focus on as he serves his people. And for people to focus on as they serve with their pastor in this world. Good advice needs to be followed. Yes, Pastor Shawi. Time to get at it. May the Lord of the church, in his eternal grace and mercy, continue to bless you as for, among, and with the people here at Shepherd of the Lakes carry out that task. Preach the word. Amen. Please stand.
The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The congregation may be seated. continue with the ordination and installation of the new pastor. One minor correction, I am Pastor Robert Kruger, not Krieger, that was correct, but I'm not the district president. I'm the chairman of the Michigan District Mission Board. It's been such a joy for me to work with you, members of the Shepherd of the Lakes, to provide resources for your ministry, for this beautiful building, and now for a new pastor. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, said to his church, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Holy Scripture assures us that our risen and ascended Lord will always provide the church with the gifts necessary to carry out this commission. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians, Christ ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up. Dear brother in Christ, this congregation has called you to serve in the office of the holy ministry. It is good that you should hear again what God in his holy word impresses on his pastors concerning this sacred office. St. Paul states that a pastor must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. He urged Timothy to set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. He further advised him, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Keep, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. In the final chapter of his second letter to Timothy, the apostle gives additional words of encouragement. Preach the word. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. The ability to carry out this calling is not in us, but comes alone from God, as St. Paul reminded the Corinthian Christians. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. In keeping with the word and will of the Lord, you are about to be installed as pastor of Shepherd of the Lakes Evangelical Lutheran Church in Linden, Michigan. I ask you in the presence of God in this congregation, are you fully determined to carry out this work according to the grace which God will give? Then, do you believe that the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments are the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds? the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? I do. Do you believe that the unaltered Augsburg Confession is a true exposition of the Word of God and a correct presentation of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and that the other confessions in the Book of Concord are also in agreement with this one scriptural truth, the apology of the Augsburg Confession? the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, and the formula of Concord. You solemnly promise that all your teaching and your administration of the sacraments will conform to the Holy Scriptures and the Lutheran confessions. Will you give faithful witness to Christ in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do and say? If so answer, I will and I ask God to help. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, gracious give, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the solemn promise given by the one you have called to be your pastor. 
I urge you, therefore, to receive him as your pastor and to keep in mind always what the word of God expects of you as members of his flock. Listen eagerly to the preaching of the word, receiving it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God. Take to heart his scriptural words of warning and encouragement, humbly accepting the word planted in you. Work together with him for our Lord's kingdom, so that by your works of service, the body of Christ might be built up. Help him by your word and example in teaching the young, remembering how the scriptures urge you to bring up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord. Honor and love him. As the Apostle Paul says, respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Pray for him continually, that his ministry among you may be greatly blessed, and that with all his responsibilities, he may continue to have a cheerful spirit. Provide also for his physical needs, for the Lord says, the worker deserves his wages. And the Apostle Paul says, anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Finally, remember what the scriptures say. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden for that would be of no advantage to you. I now ask you, in the presence of God, are you willing to receive your pastor as a minister of God? Will you show him the love, honor, and obedience in the Lord which you owe to a shepherd and overseer placed over you by the Lord Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd and overseer of souls? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will. The Almighty and merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Would please kneel. Caleb Shewi, I ordain you as a minister of the church and install you as pastor at Shepherd of the Lakes Evangelical Lutheran Church of Linden, Michigan, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord pour out on you his Holy Spirit for the work committed to you, that you may faithfully proclaim the gospel in word and sacrament. Others? Brother Shaley, life is full of challenges, but we have an awesome God. A God who has equipped us to you, a God who is with you, a God who will never leave you nor forsake you. And so I urge you to do all to the glory of God, that as you serve as shepherd here, as a husband, as a father, and as an individual, remember Paul's words in Philippians 4, verse 19, and my God will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Brother Caleb, um, welcome to the circuit. I'm excited to pass the young guy of the circuit torch to you. I've been at Salem Owasso for three years, which means I can probably confidently say I've got it all figured out. Obviously, we all know that's not true. Um, the first few years of ministry, if, if they go for you the way they did for me, it's going to be a whirlwind of wondering, do I have what it takes? Am I good enough? Am I where I need to be? What is God doing? My prayer for you is the same blessing that, that the writer to the Hebrews wanted his people to remember, too, in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, work in you everything good, to do his will. And may he work in all of us that which is good to accomplish his will. Through Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you as you work here, Caleb. Caleb, I bring you greetings from St. Paul's up in Saginaw, and greetings to your wonderful congregation here. There may be times when the blessings don't seem so visible, and you're looking for protection, and you're looking for your reward. Don't look to external things for those. Look to your God like Abraham had to. God said to Abram, and he says to you, Do not fear. I am your shield and your very great reward. Genesis 15. God bless you, Caleb. Brother Caleb, no doubt you are excited to begin your work in the vineyard of the Lord. And yet, perhaps at the back of your mind, there is a little uncertainty, a little fear of, how things are going to turn out for you. 
On those days when that fear gets to you and starts overwhelming you, I pray you find comfort in the words the Lord spoke to his servant Joshua. The same words the Lord speaks to you in Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified and do not be overwhelmed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Blessings to you, brother. Pastor Shaywe, welcome to the Southern Circuit of the Northern Conference, the Michigan District, Wells. And also I want to repeat a few words that you heard already in the epistle reading, but they bear repeating. And I don't know why anyone would look down on Timothy on account of youth, but I'll repeat those words for you. Don't let anyone look down on you on account of youth. Instead, be an example to all the believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. God bless your ministry. Brother Caleb, recall one of God's Old Testament people who also just happened to have the name of Caleb. He was one of the 12 spies that Moses sent out to spy out the promised land of Canaan. And those spies came to the area of Hebron, and there they saw, met the descendants of Anak, the Anakim, the Nephilim, those were the giants. And when the spies returned, 10 of them gave a bad report to the people, told the people, we can't fight those giants. We don't have a chance. We're like grasshoppers compared to them. And Caleb and Joshua assured, tried to assure the people, the Lord has promised, give us the land. The Lord with us, we can defeat those giants. Well, the people rebelled against the Lord, and as a result, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until the old generation died and the new generation grew up. Only Caleb and Joshua from the old generation entered the promised land of Canaan. Think how challenging it must have been for Caleb to cool his heels for 40 years in that wilderness. And then finally, the Lord backed up the waters of the Jordan, the walls of Jericho tumbled, the sun stood still. The Lord gave his people the promised land. You read a few verses from Joshua chapter 14. Now the men of Judah approached approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know that the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me, I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, the land on which, on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for. Forty-five years since the time he said, said, since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, eighty-five years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as strong to go up. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there, and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. 
Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Brother Shawi, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> this morning, we received you and your family into communicant membership at Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church. This afternoon, we are receiving you as our pastor. As a member of this congregation and an elder of this church, I assure you that these are good people, Christian people, faithful believers in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, people whose hearts are moved to serve him in love. And I encourage you to encourage them going forward all of their lives to show that love for Christ Jesus as he has loved them in everything that they are, everything they think, everything that they do. So bear in mind the word that Jesus spoke to his disciples on the evening before he was betrayed when he told them, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Pastor Caleb Shaley, my son, and now my brother in the ministry, one of the first things that popped into my head was how you have already jumped me in the roll call list of pastors at conference. And I'm going to tell you also, it's not always easy to find a specific passage that fits. I think I found one. It was just before uh, the word of God I, I shared with you in the sermon in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Receive this stole as a sign of your work and walk in obedience to the Lord Jesus, serving his people and remembering his promise. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the chief shepherd and the only head of the church. We pray that you will keep this servant of yours faithful in his study of your holy word and faithful in his proclamation of its saving truth. Give him the strength to carry out the duties of his ministry and bless his labors in your service, that your holy name may be glorified and that your kingdom may increase. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord pour out on you his Holy Spirit for the work committed to you, that you may faithfully proclaim the gospel in word and sacrament. We join in the Lord's Prayer, the traditional translation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily then and take up the work to which you have been called. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing to many, that you may bear fruit, and that your fruit may remain to eternal life.
Now, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll now continue with our closing hymn, hymn 293. God's word is our great heritage. Good afternoon, everyone. A couple of thanks before we uh, head out to the meal that has been prepared for us. A couple of words of thanks. First of all, thank you to the brothers for being here today. Thank you for everyone for being here today. And a special word of thanks for, to Pastor Krieger for all of his work that he's done. Um, during the vacancy, we thank him for the, the love and compassion that he's poured out on God's people here in this congregation. A big thank you for my, to my family. Thank you, Dad, for being here to preach today. It means a lot. Um, thank you to my wife and my son. Um, they've supported me a lot. It is a, a privilege and a blessing to be here today. Uh, to, to serve God's people, to, to work with you, to serve in this, this blessed ministry, to share God's word um, with those who, who have heard it and who have yet to hear it. Um, we thank you for your, your prayers and your generosity that you've already showed us while we are here. We are greatly appreciative of that. And we look forward to get going, get to work to enjoy working together for that, that blessed gospel message. So again, thank you to everyone. Uh, some announcements in regard to the meal. Uh, you will be ushered out this afternoon, and as you are ushered out, you'll form a line along that left wall. You'll be directed to go into the kitchen, go around the island, get your plate of food. You'll come out there, get your, your drinks, and you'll find a, a, a seat um, wherever you may sit. Those of you who are sitting in a metal chair, if I could ask a favor of you, um, we need those chairs to fill spaces in the back for the table. So if you could take your chair and, and move it back there, uh, just find an empty spot and put it there, that would greatly uh, be appreciated. The Lord's blessings to all of you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. One, one thing. I... Mistakes, right? Mistakes, right? Let's join, in, let's join in prayer before we head out there for the meal. Heavenly Father, we thank you, first of all, for this blessed ministry that you have given to us. We are not deserving of it. But now as we turn our attention to fellowship, we, we ask for your blessing. Blessing as we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ, create new relationships, grow existing ones. Bless us and the food that we are to partake. Nourish us as it is according to your will. We join together in the common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. <laughs>